If you're a quilter and would like to try embroidery or an embroiderer and would like to try quilting, we have the perfect solution, crazy quilting. This Victoria era needle art can be mastered by using an embroidery machine. Here to share how embroidery and quilting can be merged into a hoop is our embroidery expert, Eileen Roche. Nancy, with crazy quilting, a small accent makes a big statement. This wristlet was pieced, embroidered, and assembled all in a hoop. It's a magical process. Today's crazy quilting with your embroidery machine. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. In the Victorian era, crazy p quilting, crazy piecing was done by hand. Mm -hmm. And if you were with us during the first program of the series, you saw my great grandmother's quilt that she did on the back of damask. And then a newer version done by her daughter using scraps of velour. This one never has been backed, but no batting, mm -hmm. just a foundation paper, I should say fabric, and a lot of hand stitching and interesting detail. Beautiful details, ribbon and decorative stitching, even some trim, it's gorgeous, Nancy. Yeah, it's, it's a fun thing. And if you missed the first program, you may want to go to nancyzeman.com, and that's where all our videos are. And just in the video section, type in today's crazy quilting with your embroidery machine, part one, and you can watch it. So we're going to kind of use some of that background we used from the first program, and then we're going to make smaller projects, but useful projects. Just like we did in the first program where we did blocks, we're mm -hmm. going to add decorative elements to in the hoop projects, three small um, accessories for a lady. We have a wristlet, has a little pocket. We all even have an eyeglass case, again with another storage pocket, and then this uh, snap kiss purse frame. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. You can decorate the front with crazy quilting and have a plain back or do both sides. Choice is yours. But it's all done in the hoop. So it's high tech. It's mm -hmm. high tech sewing. And people ask me what has changed since I've been on sewing with Nancy. Mm -hmm. Well, this is it. Embroidery. So to start on, let's say, the wristlet, you're going to have to prepare some fabrics. The first, you're going to need a length of ribbon, 11 and a half inches long. This is your pocket fabric that you interface with regular interfacing, and that's cut 11 inches by 7. And then the outer fabric and lining, same dimensions, 11 by 7. But you have to add some body to that, and we do have beautiful decorative stitching on the back. So to get that stiffness so that, you know, it has mm -hmm. some shape to it, right. uh, we'll use a heavy craft interfacing, and that too is a digital file. You could also print a template and just cut it out. But if you choose to use the digital file, sure. you stitch color one, which shows you where to place your heavy craft interfacing, and then it stitches it out. Yeah, it's, it's the real stiff stuff. Yeah, super stiff. And then cut it on those lines. That's what all those lines mean. So just cut it out, and then you are ready to work on the flap. The pretty flap. Whether it's the eyeglass case or the wristlet, it's done in the same manner. Mm -hmm. And if you've done patchwork or crazy piecing, paper piecing, whatever you'd like to call it, mm -hmm. it's always a kind of a number system going to embroider quilt by number. Right, and of course you start with patch one, which goes right side up, covering that space, and then a tack down, that tack down stitch is uh, next, and then you'll add patch two, and three, four, and five. And we're gonna show this to you, but right now this is the inf what you see in the embroidery hoop on a foundation, on the stabilizer, is the first thread color that the embroidery machine stitches. It stitches these outlines and the numbers. Mm -hmm. Just like my great-grandmother used a scrap of damask or muslin to base her embroidery on, this is where we're going to do ours. And this is what the, the design looks like. You can see the LCD screen in the first stitch 
mimics exactly what we have already stitched in the hoop. And it's a good idea to stitch that in contrasting thread so sure. you can see it as you work along. Now I'm kind of placing out some little patches here. And why don't you explain that? Well, these small sections of paper are actually templates of each individual patch. And they do include a quarter inch seam allowance, but I've learned through this process is it's easier to just cut around a large patch to give you ample fabric for the piecing process. You can always trim away after you've stitched. Absolutely. And so when you go to your sewing machine, place them in chronological order so that you won't get confused and you leave them like that and as you apply you just kind of work your way down the pile. We've used silk dubioni or you could use a variety of fabrics of mm -hmm. silk, cottons, we'll show mm -hmm. you some cottons later mm -hmm. on, but the dubioni is brilliant and mm -hmm. bright and, and fun to work with. It's best to work with fabrics that have the same weight because yes. if you have multi mm -hmm. different fabrics, maybe stretchy or with a high nap or so forth, you can get into some trouble with the embroidery foot. So just stick to one single layer. So we have the embroidery that has been stitched on the foundation. We have our fabrics ready to apply and now it's time to do the stitching. If you like embroidery and want to become a quilter, this is the perfect project because the piecing done in the embroidery unit is so precise and you're going to see even though the fabrics are cut not necessarily accurately, just bigger than the template area, every piecing will be exact. And Eileen, you have that first stitching, that first thread color on the foundation already stitched, and you're ready to do the next step. I'm going to take fabric number one, patch number one, right side up and cover that first outline of one. And it will travel around the patch. Best to keep your hands <laughs> out of harm's way. Now the tack down is actually larger than the patch, so if you're just off a millisecond, it's fine. Millimeter, I guess I should say. And now we want to add patch two. And patch two is over in the top of the hoop. So I'll place it right sides together and lower the presser foot and keep my hands out of the way from the foot and the needle mm -hmm. and just let it stitch this next seam. And once that's secure, I'm going to flip my fabric open to expose the right side. Finger press that open. And this is where a piece of tape comes in really handy. Place that out of harm's way. And then my next section of fabric is three. And again, right sides together. Place it so that I'm covering that seam, the, the other stitching. I can check and make sure. Yeah, you have to kind of lift up the fabric a little bit. Yep, to make sure that you're covering the area you need to cover. And we'll let this stitch. Now you have a little extra seam allowance, so you could do some trimming. Absolutely. I like to do my trimming, you know, if, if I'm worried that it's, that it's going to bleed through, then this would be a good time to go ahead and trim this excess. And maybe this portion. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just finger press open patch three. And again, use tape to hold it down. And now Eileen is going to finish adding all the remaining patches. Eileen almost has this crazy quilting finished. You're adding patch six. It's the last one, last piece of the puzzle. I've trimmed the excess seam allowance mm -hmm. underneath all these patches. But this delicate silk fabric really is not bulky by any means, so you don't have to worry about double seams or excess seam allowance. And you could use cotton fabric by mm -hmm. all means, but regardless, your seams will be perfect because it's digitized in there. Mm -hmm. And like what happens with the Victorian area crazy quilting, the next step that the machine will stitch will be these beautiful decorative stitches in the exact position. So we're going to be showing you how that's put together it's kind of effortless, so you'll find many in the hoop projects will do this for you. So I'll start, color one. Now each seam is a different color, so you have the option to change threads, or you could do a monochromatic thread look and just stay with one color. If we take a look at the LCD screen, you'll see that 
it, the stitch that's there, it just shows you exactly what you'll be stitching so you know where it's going to be going. If you point that out, I think you'll see that it's just a short little stitch and each time that you add one of the additional stitches, it takes maybe four or five minutes to do all this decorative stitching, but when you do, then it looks something like this. And as Eileen is finishing adding, or not finishing, but adding some more stitches, we just want to share with our audience that you can also add some dimensional embroideries. And this is a separate embroidery that was stitched in a hoop. And Eileen, you stitch these in with water-soluble stabilizer, netting, organza. Or yes, any really a variety of lightweight fabrics that pretty much disappear. And they disappear with a little non-traditional sewing tool. <laughs> we'll just burn away the organza or, or the netting. A little easier to do close at hand, but you can see you can scoot it all away. And then you have this embellishment that could be added at this point. You'd pop it out of the hoop. You could place this as an accent, be dimensional wherever you'd like it to be. We just use clear thread when adding it to the clutch. So crazy quilting, crazy embroidery, there are so many options. If you're a quilter first and want to learn how to embroidery, embroider, you can see from this flap that Eileen just finished, or one like it, that the embroidery was done effortlessly right in the hoop. And I've trimmed off all the extra stabilizer along the last stitching line so that, you know, that was my pattern to work with. So speaking of pattern, we're going to show you a wristlet or you could also make an eyeglass case or a clutch and this will be assembled in the hoop. So a lot of the sewing is already done for you. It's just some placement that we're going to add. And on the back of this eyeglass case, and you'll see on Eileen's wristlet that there's some interesting quilting, embroidery, whatever you want to identify it as to make the fabric very textured. Absolutely, it's gorgeous. So I've already stitched color one of this in the hoop design, which is the placement guide of the outer dimensions. And I'm going to place my prepared interfacing, that heavy craft interfacing right inside those outlines. And you could use a little spray adhesive if you'd like. Or, or tape it down. Or tape it down. You have some spray adhesive on I there. I do have a little spray adhesive on there. And then I'll take my outer fabric and place that over the interfacing. And I just want to make sure that I'm covering all of the outlines. You know, I just have to make sure I'm covering everything. So, you finger have press some tape that down. On the side. I mm -hmm. do. So, I'll, I'll just add one more piece of tape over here for security. Lower the presser foot and we'll start. The first thing it's going to do is an outline all the way around the entire little wristlet mm -hmm. and then it'll come to the interior and decorate those beautiful stitches that we had seen on Nancy's eyeglass case. So that is quite a bit of stitching. It takes about 16 minutes. <laughs> so we'll probably do that off camera. Sure. So this gives, just gives you an accurate, uh, it later it will be turned along that line. And sometimes you know when you're sewing and you're going around curves, it's hard to get identical curves on both sides of the project. Well here, because it's digitized, you don't have any of those issues. And every time you make it, it will be perfect. <laughs> Each one will match the one before it. The same size. So if you're, mm -hmm. if you're making gifts for birthdays or holidays, you can have them matching. And, and in about 20 minutes, you have a gorgeous little in-the-hoop project. Sure. Now the next step is going to be that decorative stitching, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll get that going, and it, it's kind of like watching paint dry. It just goes and goes, <laughs> and uh, so we'll, we'll start it, and then we'll come back. We'll let it get going here, but you'll see that you don't even have to um, touch the fabric. You can just stitch. So that's the beauty of this type of embroidery and sewing. This beautiful decorative design that takes about 16 minutes to stitch is just about complete. We have just a couple tiny little more motifs and then we will add our next fabric. And I think I'll we'll cut the thread right there. So let's take a look at the screen so we can see that what our next color is. And that is just a straight line right at the bottom. And what that's going to do is when I add this fabric, 
which is my interface pocket folded in half, the fold end is up here, and I place that over the beautiful embroidery that we just stitched, and I want to align the top of the fold with that bottom placement mark. Now that mark stitched right on the foundation so that it's not decorative, it's purely functional. Right. And we'll let it stitch, and it's just going to sew right across the bottom. And for those of you who are new to sewing, but you like embroidery, well, you're going to look like you've been sewing for years with these <laughs> digital files. I think that's what I love about In so, the hoop designs. Yes, absolutely. Over on the screen, you can see now the next line of stitching is up in this interior area. And that's actually going to attach my flap. So I'll place the flap right side down and I'm going to align the absolute top edge of that with the placement line that's on the top. And you and can tape it down yes, if you want it. Yes, and that's a great idea, Nancy. We'll just hold that in place right there, and it's going to stitch across and attach that. You do want to make sure you get it on there straight. <laughs> Now I'll peel off this tape. And then this is when I flip my flap, <laughs> flip my flap. <laughs> and you can finger press that. And now I will add the little ribbon handle and that sits right at the edge. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the correct way. Align the raw edges of the ribbon with the raw edges of the little wristlet and then tape it down for security, and then it's gonna run a straight stitch, capturing the ribbon and attaching it to the outer fabric. Now, if you wanted to, you could remove the hoop from the embroidery machine and press that with a small iron mm -hmm. to get it flat. There's certainly mm -hmm. a, a, an option, but with this type of fabric, it finger presses really easily. Yeah, and I think I'll pull this forward so you can get a better look at what's happening now. So, the next step is to take the outer fat, or this is actually the lining, and we're going to make sure that we cover the entire fabric that's below it, and it's also best to flatten the ribbon underneath because that will want to lift your fabric a little bit, so just go ahead and flatten that, and then you can use another piece of tape up on the top, slide that hoop back in position, and it will run around two times. This is a two-ply design, so it's gonna start in one corner, travel all the way around, and then repeat itself. And that's all there is to the sewing in the hoop, the piecing in the hoop. Yeah, while that stitches, why don't you show our viewers what it looks like when you're finished? So when you take it out of the hoop, you have, it's best to trim it, and pinking shears work very well, especially on a curved edge like that. Nip off the extra fabric that's at the corners, and then we will turn it. Now this will take a minute, you know how that is. <laughs> you have to kind of work it, and it's that heavy craft interfacing, so it's a little stiff to turn, but after you work it for a minute or two, it, we call this birthing the bag, right, Nancy? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's kind of an old quilting technique, but now we're using it on crazy quilting. We'll now just... you can use a, a, a pinking shears to do the trimming, a rotary cutter that has a pinking blade. That is a great way of trimming off the excess fabric. So use something that somewhat notches those edges so that you get some of the grating, the excess fabric out of the way. And at the, at a pressing table, you know, you mm -hmm. would press and use a point turner, the curved end of a point turner to make sure that that seam out at the outer curve is all smooth and rounded. And now my bottom looks a little funny, but I will just take the pocket and flip that to the inside, revealing that pretty stitching <laughs> that we spent 16 minutes <laughs> of stitching time. Perfect. And there you have it. Well, Eileen, what a great way of combining embroidery, quilting, and stitching all in the hoop. Thank you for being my guest. Thank you, Nancy.
Generally, we think of quilts providing warmth and beauty for patients suffering from the effects of Parkinson's disease. Specially made lightweight quilts also provide much needed comfort. Joining me via Skype from West Hartford, Vermont is Sonia Hakala, founder of the Parkinson's Comfort Project. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Sonia. Thank you very much for having me, Nancy. It's a pleasure to be here. We, we, we search, you know, for, for projects to share with our viewers. And when we saw the Parkinson's Comfort Project, we just knew we had to do this. And I'd like you to give our viewers a little summary of how, when you, how you founded this and why. It actually started with my parents, Gus and Marsha Hakala. In 2001, they were both diagnosed with Parkinsonian syndrome. Um, wow. From an outside viewpoint, it's hard to say what the difference between Parkinsonian syndrome and Parkinson's diseases. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to really matter because the results are the same. But that was a diagnosis. In 2002, they both moved into a nursing home. My dad died in August of that year. Now, I didn't quilt until about 2006, 2007. So my mom was the recipient of all my quilting. I did uh, table runners, and I did seasonal wall hangings, and I made her two two full-size bed quilts. In early 2010, my sister and I became aware of the fact that my mom was starting to fail. Mm -hmm. And in June of that year, she called me and asked me if I would make her a smaller quilt because the full-size bed quilts were too heavy for her. She couldn't turn around in bed with them on top of her. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I did. I had some blocks left over from a book that I had written called Teach Yourself Visually Quilting, and they were in pink, which was her favorite color. <laughs> So I put the blocks together and I added some on either end to make it a little bit longer. And I sent it down to the Cape. My parents and my siblings live on Cape Cod. I'm the only one up in Vermont. And um, I was amazed when I got a chance to watch my mom with that quilt, what a difference it made. Because I always thought of lap quilts as too big for a wall and too small for a bed. And, yes. But they were perfect for what she needed. And when she was cold on her shoulders, they could put it on her shoulders. But the thing that really got me is when she would roll over on her side and roll it into a ball like a, a child with a, a beloved blanket. Um, in the last week of her life, I was spending all my time on the Cape, and I was at my sister's house, and one of my brothers was there. I have six brothers. And my brother Mark happened to be looking through an AARP newsletter, and he saw an ad for the Alzheimer's Foundation, and they were looking for people to make small quilts for people with Alzheimer's disease. And mm -hmm. my brother gave me one of those brotherly elbows, and he said, <laughs> you know what, you could do that for people with Parkinson's. And that's where it started. And so you did. And uh, it's, it's comforting to see a patient being wrapped in a lap quilt as a shoulder warmer and oh, yeah. a beautiful one. And you've made some pretty, pretty quilts. They don't have to be, you know, a certain design. They can be a, a sizes, shapes, just so that they're attractive, but lightweight, as you mentioned. That's correct. Yeah. What do you we use generally for try to stay within three feet by five feet, thirty-six okay. by sixty inches, sure. something like that. Sure. And and we have some other quilts to show they can be traditionally pieced. They can be kind of uh, asymmetrical. Uh, they're yep. just it's just great. What do you use for batting, Sonia? Um, we always ask that people use cotton batting because mm -hmm. we iron on labels on the back, and if it's a polyester batting, we all know what's going to happen to right. that. Right. Uh huh. So, and right now you're in the New England area. That's correct. But your goal is to go beyond. Oh, absolutely. Parkinson's, unfortunately, is becoming more common, or at least is becoming more commonly diagnosed. It's a very challenging um, disorder to have. And we, there are a lot of places, wonderfully, that are doing things about uh, doing research into a cure. But there really isn't any organization that we've come across that really goes after trying to give people comfort during this journey. Mm -hmm. So we're expanding beyond the idea of quilts using that same paradigm of comfort. And we've started a speakers bureau. And one of our goals is to be able to link caregivers um, up um, through uh, digital technology so that they can talk to one another and support one another when they can't drive anywhere. Sure. Well, Sonia, thank you for sharing both the fabric end and the support end of Parkinson's Covered Quilt Project. And it's a pleasure to have you and on our program. And if you at home would like to learn more about this project, you can go to nancyzeman.com. And when you click on videos, 
click on the, the Parkinson's Comfort Project to see the interview again or information or connections to their website. And I'd like to thank you, Sonia, for being our guest and also for those of you who are watching from home. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Eileen Roche has written the book Today's Crazy Quilting with Your Embroidery Machine, which serves as a reference for this two-part series. The book includes a CD with three crazy quilt blocks, three in the hoop projects, and 12 accent designs. It's $29.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2821. Order item number BK00126. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.